The Honda Odyssey, it's been a big hit for the company in a very tight battle of minivans. And for 2014, it gets a number of tech and engineering upgrades. Some sublime, some ridiculous. Let's drive this 2014 Odyssey Touring Elite top of the stack and check the tech. Now identifying a 14 Odyssey is not too hard because they've done a mid-cycle revision. An aluminum hood, different lines around the face, quite a few different feature lines on the body. What happened here? And there's a vast gutter back here for the slider hinge, more visually than you normally see on minivans. And then it all kind of comes to this unpleasant end. So if you do like this, it's kind of an attractive minivan. Now inside the Odyssey, it feels like a minivan should. It's spacious, it's got my favorite thing about minivans, armrests, I love these. And you've got the full stack head unit in this car because it's a touring elite. That means we have navigation standard, for example. They've made some improvements in the look of the map. The logic of using it hasn't changed, but the look is at least a little more on par with a 2014 model year car. See my video on the Fit EV to see how I feel about the previous generation. This is getting a little better. What I also like is they seem to have cleaned up some of the logic here where when you do an address on this vehicle, it shows up only in one place. On some previous Hondas with this split screen duo, you had keyboards on both. You still get some madness going on with things like radio that don't really sync up. They're not on the same screen of selections. And as you move one around, the other one doesn't track. So this is an excessively complicated system that looks good. I like the idea of a local touch control panel, but they've got to simplify. I'll point this out. This is one of the very few Hondas that has HD radio and it's included standard because it's high trim. Lots of Hondas are missing that if you care. Now, as you can hear, we've got rear camera and sonar standard in this vehicle, and I've got a multi-angle on that camera. I can get an extreme down view, a wide view, and a mid view and you've got distance bars as well. That's important in a big vehicle like this that is typically owned by someone who has children, theirs and the neighbor's kids running around in the driveway and in the front yards. So that's a big deal. In terms of more interesting audio sources, you've got some hard drive space, 16 gigabytes you'll never use, and you've also got Pandora and AHA as your streaming apps. That's it for connected car in this vehicle. Now back here is a wonderland of entertainment technology. Standard on the Touring Elite is this Gigunda super wide drop down LCD screen and this wireless remote that goes with it. You can split this guy to have one screen or two. You can choose HDMI for example on the other side, DVD from the deck up there on one side and of course you get nothing on one side because Nothing ever works that well, does it? For some reason, the HDMI port is way back in the third row. I hooked up to that, and then I came in through Apple's adapter to an iPad, but I get nothing. And your kids are gonna be really mad when this doesn't work. So if you're really counting on this being your solution to long road trips, bring your mobile and your cable and make sure all this is gonna work for you. Real buggy for us. Now, a minivan is not any damn good if you can't carry lots of stuff in it, right? So let's see what this Odyssey does in that respect. We have power doors everywhere, as you probably noticed. Two on the side and this big old tailgate back here. Here's a big old storage well when you've got it in three row configuration. Lots of you have asked, how easy is it to move seats on these minivans? Well, here's how they do it on this guy. You pull this strap, pull the whole seat down. You can lift those seats forward and remove them in the second row. And if when you get these down, they're covered with all kinds of filth that your kids didn't tell you they were putting back there, you're in luck, because the Touring Elite comes with, you heard about it, the vacuum cleaner. Now under the hood is pretty garden variety Honda stuff, but that's not a bad thing. Three and a half liter V6 sitting side saddle. No tricky stuff, no direct injection, no turbos, nothing like that, obviously. The numbers, 248 horse, 250 foot pounds of torque. This vehicle weighs something around 4,600 pounds in this trim, yet it gets to 60 in a little over seven and a half seconds. That's pretty good, while still delivering 1928 MPG, which is also pretty good. A lot of quieting and noise vibration and harshness technologies here. For example, this engine sits on active engine mounts that sort of intelligently counteract the engine's own weird harmonics to cancel them out before they get transferred into the body shell. Inside the car, you've got active noise cancellation as well. As I mentioned, front wheel drive only on this guy, six speed automatic, that's also new this year. You want all wheel drive, go shop somewhere else. Now underway, you've got a variety of technologies helping you drive this big old thing. There's lane departure warning tech. You've also got 
a collision mitigation warning. Again, it's passive, but it's gonna blink this big old brake light right there in the dash if you're closing on someone in front of you and about to hit them. And on this Touring Elite top model only, you've got passive blind spot tech from some little itty bitty little warning lights over in the mirror that I don't find are very useful. The Odyssey drives better than a whole bunch of smaller sedan and coupe cars that we get in here. It's got a responsive powertrain. The suspension is firm enough without being hard. I find this vehicle perfectly pleasant, if not nice, to drive. If I have any gripes, it's that the steering is over-assisted, especially at uh, freeway levels. It actually makes it a little more laborious to drive, not less. Okay, pricing our Odyssey is pretty easy because we have a Touring Elite. Just about everything's included at about forty-five-three delivered. Now, on top of that, the only option that'll get you further CNET style is remote start for four hundred more. Installed at the dealer, by the way. So we're at somewhere a little shy of forty-six thousand dollars. You buy an Odyssey because it's perhaps the best driving of its class and has handsome looks to my eye. The technology is good, if not great. I've still got some issues with that navigation system, that split screen interface, and as you can see, we had to fight with that rear screen and didn't get what we wanted out of it.